Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at creating this simple effect. Now, in times gone by when I wanted to create projects like this that depended on text as shapes, I'd have to resort to some pretty cumbersome workarounds. But now with Pixelmator Pro, we can actually make those shapes automatically and bring them into motion. And life is so much better. So anyway, let's get started on this. So here we are in Pixelmator. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select the template that I want. So film and video, and I want 1920, 1080, and I'm gonna create a new project, I suppose you'd call it. Then I'm going to come down here and select the text tool and I'm going to type the word shape. And I'm using this particularly crazy font just to make it as hard as possible because, you know, if you were trying to trace this in motion, you'd have a pretty tough job. So I'm just going to come into transform and then scale it up like this and maybe center it up as well. Although in fact, we don't even need to do any of this and we could have sorted it all out in motion. So the thing we want to do is we're going to come over to Format and down here we want to Convert into Shape. So you'll see that's now created this bunch of shapes over here on the left. Now the other thing we want to make sure to do is not to have a fill but to have an outline because the fill is not going to be much help to us in motion but we do want an outline. So I'm going to come to this Style tab, the one with the paintbrush. I'm going to add a style and I'm going to add a stroke like that. I'm going to turn off the fill. We can choose any old stroke colour. I'm just going to go for sort of mid grey like that. So now we're ready to export this. So if we come to File, Export, there are lots of export options as you can see, all sorts of pretty useful stuff. But what we want is Motion Project. And if we export that as a Motion Project, it's actually going to create a new Motion Project. So let's call this Tutorial Shapes. So I'm happy with that frame rate, but I think I might just reduce that duration down to five seconds and then hit export. So now I've opened up motion and I've come to file and open. And here is where I've saved my tutorial shapes project. You can see it's got its own folder. We can open up that tutorial shapes project. And what we get is this. So you can see that we've got this background white layer from our Pixelmator project. We could have deleted it there, but I'm going to delete it now. And we've got, if I open this up, we've got all our shapes. Now you see it's very nicely created a shape for, so I turn on the overlays, you can see it's created a shape for the inside of the E there and the inside of the O and so on. So we've got a we've got a shape for every bit of our text. Just one thing I want to be able to do here is to come to the inspector, select them all, and you'll notice they're all slightly out of position. It's just going to make life easier if I just reset this. So reset that. And now they're all at zero. My group is at zero. Uh, I've just kind of tidied everything up to make life easier as we build this project. So what I'm going to do next is select all of these shapes. Shift select like that. And I'm going to come to behaviors and shape and write on. And then I'm going to select all those write on behaviors because we don't want them to run for the entire duration of the project. I'm going to come to, I don't know, like say three seconds on the timeline like that and hit O and that they only run for that duration. And now we've got our animation. And that was really quite quick and easy to do. So then let's give this just a little bit of color. I'm going to select that shape group and I'm going to come to stylize and fill. And I don't know what we're going to go for here. Maybe just something like that. Just keep these colors fairly muted, I think. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that group and duplicate it. So right click duplicate and I'm going to come to its position, its Z position. I'm going to set that to 35 and you can see how that's now created a nice offset version of it. And I'm going to duplicate it again, right click duplicate and this time set that Z position to 70. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this enclosing group to 3D and I'm going to add object camera. And then I'm just going to sort of roll around till I've got something that I like. Don't often do this. I kind of usually do camera by the numbers, but I'm going to go wild and crazy here and use the 
on-screen controls. And before I'm going to go any further, I'm just going to change up these colors. So that second uh, shape group, the, I guess that's the middle one, I'm going to go for something like that, perhaps. And then the top one coming into the fill here, just set it to, oops, you should select the color swatch. There we go. Set it to something like that. Let's so say just keep these fairly subtle. Then I'm going to select this group and I'm going to come to filters and blur and directional blur. And I'm going to set this amount to something like a thousand. And I just want to get this direction right. So first of all, I'm going to set that mix value down to something like 40%. And I just want to get a sort of nice angle that feels like it reflects the camera, something like that. Actually, yeah, that amount needs to come up, doesn't it? Let's go for a 1500. And then after this, I'm going to add a color, color curves and just crank that up quite a lot like this. So then I want to add a bit of lighting. So what I'm going to do is actually duplicate, close all this up, duplicate one of these groups here, right click, duplicate, and I'm going to move it out to the top. And let's call this lighting. And of course, let's turn it to 3D. Just want to make sure that all these have retained their zero position. That's good, they have done so. And then we can add object light. And I'm just going to pop it into that lighting group there. Now, all of these shapes that I've copied are really only there to give us motion paths for the lights that I'm going to add. So I'm going to select them all and turn them off because we don't actually want to see them. So just to make the life a little bit easier, I'm just going to delete the shapes that we don't need. So that's the infill of the A, that's the infill of the P, and this is the upper uh, shape of the E. So delete all of those. So then what I'm going to do is select that light and I'm going to come to behaviors, basic motion and motion path. I'm going to select for the path shape geometry and I'm going to grab that S and add it to the source well. Now you'll notice that our front shape has disappeared. We can only really see two of them and that's because our light is too far back and we can't do much about it because it's attached to that motion path. But what we can do is we can come to the lighting group and we can reset that Z position. I'm going to go for 120. And now you can see, we can see all three of our layers. And I'm going to come back to the light and I'm going to increase that intensity to 250 and maybe increase that fall off to five. Then I'm going to select that motion path and come to about three seconds on the timeline and hit O just so that completes its path within those three seconds in time with the rest of the animation. So then I'm going to take that light and right click duplicate, come to its motion path. And you've probably guessed it, I'm going to use the H as the source, go on through the letters, right click, duplicate that light, come to the motion path, select that outer A shape, two more to do, right click, duplicate, come to the motion path, let's select the outer P shape there, right click, duplicate, and the last one is the outer shape of the E like that. So now together, they're looking like this. There's one thing we're going to do now that's going to make it all come alive. And that's to select this group and come to filters and Hawaii Super Glow. And immediately it's looking so much nicer. You probably don't want to go out and buy Hawaii Super Glow. Why should you? But it, it really is very good value. For example, we can actually change the color of the glow like this. I'm going to add some blue into that. I'm just going to adjust that threshold slightly so we're not getting quite so much burnout. Maybe it'd reduce the amount just a little. But anyway, you know, Hawaii Super Glow is fantastically sophisticated and uh, I think it's well worth investing in if you're interested in Glow. But if you're not, you can always try and um, fudge it with uh, Glow Neon or something like that. The The basic Glow is, is absolutely diabolical. I wouldn't even touch that anymore. The Neon is kind of okay. If you've, if you've got some patience. Anyway, I'm going to stick with Super Glow and there's just a couple of more things I want to do. The first of which is to animate the camera. So I'm going to come to the camera properties, come to the first frame. I'm going to keyframe the global position, keyframe the global rotation, and I'm going to come to the end. 
And then I'm going to turn on my overlays. So let's just rotate the camera around like that and then just move it across like this, possibly something like that. That's going to give us this nice sort of rotating animation. What I want to do is I want to come into the master group down here, closed up that lighting group, we don't need to see that anymore. And this directional blur here, let's hide the color curves, which always take up so much space. Let's also hide super glow. So important thing is to switch this to crop. And the other thing I want to do is I want to come to the first frame and keyframe the angle and then come to the last frame and maybe get the angle to go the other way. So it's like swiveled around with the camera like that. So what I've got sort of 67 or something, you'll have to do this by eye depending on your, your camera setup. So now that's looking like that, which I think is, is quite nice. So another thing I want to do is to add another directional blur just above the existing one. So come to filters, blur and directional blur. And let's again, crank the amount up. Let's go for something like 1200. And in this case, I'm, I'm happy for it to go left to right like this. The default angle is good. And I'm going to set that mix value down to something like maybe 25. And that's added in these nice horizontal lines, which I think add quite a bit to it. I would ensure, I think in this case, to come to generators and look for color solid. And I want to bring that in behind everything else like that. And let's bring its color way down like this. And let's increase its scale to something like 400. Doesn't matter, it can be nice and big. And move it back, move it back on Z to something like negative 100. And the only other thing I would suggest is, is actually to come into some of these groups and just offset them. So we can offset the groups as a whole. So let's move that one like four frames, move this one sort of something like eight frames. And that's going to give us a slightly more interesting... Ah, so you'll notice that that froze there. And the reason for that is I forgot to turn on crop here in my other directional blur. It's really important because otherwise it's trying to process some absolutely huge... Uh, canvas. Whereas if you turn on crop, it's only pr pr processing the 1920 and that's much safer. So now we've got that looking nice and smooth. And with those offsets, we're getting a kind of much more interesting effect. We could also just come into the individual shapes and move those as well. So, you know, move the S and move the P and so on. I mean, you get the idea offsetting the animation a little bit just like that gives a lot more kind of eye candy. You could even, if you wanted, just come in and, and change the directions of the uh, write-ons. You can see that the P, I've done that for the P, maybe you can see that. So it's actually writing on in two different directions. And that actually looks quite nice, I think. So lots of ways in which you can just kind of just give it extra character. For my version, I did quite a bit more of that offsetting we were talking about, reversing directions, and I gave it some extra colour correction. But overall, I think that's probably enough for now. Hope that's been interesting. As you can see, this becomes so much easier when you've got those nice uh, Pixelmator paths. So thanks very much for watching. See you again on the next one.